Yes. Hi. My name is Doreen Ayi, Head of Catering Services at Epsom St. Helia Hospital. Welcome to my kitchen. Today, I'm going to be cooking for you the well famous jollof rice. Or, or jollof rice originally is actually from Senegal, which can be traced back to the 1300s from Gambia and Mauritania, I think. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to set the cut amongst the pigeons right now. The world famous jollof you're going to ever taste on the West Coast is from Ghana. So, here we go. I'm going to try and emulate everything that my mom taught me. Jollof rice actually happens to be my mom's favorite meal at the moment. Okay, so I'm going to do my best to emulate that. Now my team are then going to taste it and tell you how stunning this jollof is going to be. All right, so firstly, jollof is literally rice and tomato based sauce. Okay, spices is as warm as you want it, as hot as you want it, but you originally will need your cooking oil, you've got your onions, you've got your plum tomatoes, which I like to kind of blitz a little bit, um, or you can have chopped plum tomatoes with that. You need your stock cubes, your bay leaves, you've got cayenne chili pepper here, um, plum, uh, tomato puree, salt and pepper, I like to add a bit of garlic powder to it, and then your seasoning oil. These are all the ingredients as you can see over here. I also normally like to add a little bit of green peas to it, um, so that orange of the jollof coming out and the side of the peas is actually quite stunning. Today, I would also like to pair this up with some barbecue chicken, spicy chicken, which I will show you later on. So, here we go. I'm going to actually start by warming my pot. Let's give the pot. This is a working kitchen, so we've got a huge pot going on here. This will make probably about 20 portions. I'm looking to do around 10 portions so my team can get to taste this. All right, so firstly, we're gonna warm the palm up with some oil um, to make the tomato sauce, all right? So, here we go. So I've actually got my colleague testing here who is going to be um, asking me a few questions as I go along just to break this up a little bit. So, whilst I'm waiting for my oil to be hot, We'll be to your testing. What would you like to know? Thank you very much for giving us a, a brief description about the ingredients. Mm -hmm. First of all, then, so tell me about where, which part of Ghana are you from, Sorry. Right, so now, I'm actually a city girl, always grew up in the city. So Accra is where I'm from, and I was born in the Usu region. So Usu is around the actual beachfront um, of Ghana, stunning part of the world. Um, if I could teleport myself there right, right now, I will. We're all about palm trees and fresh fish and white sandy beaches, stunning part of the world. Right. Yeah. How is how is growing up in uh, in Ghana? Well, I am the third of six siblings, so I've got an elder sister and a brother, and I'm the middle child, and I've got three children, uh, siblings after me, and very tight family. So, mum and dad very astute entrepreneurs. My dad was actually in the army, so he worked from, uh, by, um, from the National Airline, which was Ghana Airways, now defunct. So yeah, very, very busy family, very entrepreneurial. We were at the very age, you know what Africans are like, you have to learn at, at a very tender age how to cook, how to clean, how to tidy up your bedroom and all of that kind of stuff. So I've got my discipline um, with my work ethics from a very, very tender age. Um, Lovely family. I love my family a lot. They make my world go round. Okay. So, which is your mom's favorite um, dish? Of well, like I was saying, dishes? yes. Um, mom loves jollof. Okay. So, um, dad normally wouldn't have spicy food. So, this poor woman had to actually cook two dishes: one spicy, one not so spicy. Um, and then we kind of fight over it. Now, this jollof rice normally. When you're, you've cooked it, the very base of it becomes very, very crunchy. And I'll tell you what, that is the best part of the jollof. Because it gives you a texture of the soft rice and the crunchiness of the base. Lots of people love that. Anyway, here we go. So we're going to put our chopped onions in the oil to make the base of the tomato sauce. I, I like quite a lot of um, onions in my food because it gives a nice caramelized flavor to the tomato sauce. Um, and actually, I quite like that a lot. So it might seem a lot of onion. This is about two big bulbs of red onion, finely chopped, um, and that is going to be the base of our stew for today. Okay, so 
This will take a couple of minutes to soften up and then we're going to add some chili flakes to it. Um, nice cayenne pepper or smoked cayenne if you want yeah. can be added to it. So it all depends on how much heat you actually want in it. Okay. Others may add a bit of scotch bonnet with the plant tomatoes when they are actually blending it. Um, but I like to add just normal chili flakes to it. Okay. Right. So whilst this is cooking, you would also then add. Uh, just dry this a little bit. Depending on how much heat you want, I would normally put in a couple of teaspoons, uh, tablespoons of chili. Okay, this this will be to taste. So it's entirely up to you how much chili you want in it. So there we go. Is it that normal chili powder or is it that? Right, so normally in, in Ghana we actually have the red chili fingers okay. and then we sun dry this and then it's actually then put through a food processor and then we use that so that there's no um, any additions or anything, it's just pure heat. So, and the flavor is actually quite pronounced as well. Okay, so here we go. As you can see, onion is caramelizing very well. Um, you don't need to cook um, the chili at all, so we could we'll go straight in and add the tomato puree. Okay, so a couple of tablespoons of tomato puree. So again, this makes the tomato sauce very rich and the jollof rice very colorful. I'm going to add a little bit more of the tomato puree to it. Yes. yes. Okay. So here we go. You'll find that this is actually going to bind the onions and the chili all together. Um, and again, it doesn't take any time at all to cook. Okay. okay. The way you know that you've actually cooked the acidity out of the tomato puree is when it all congeals together like that and the oil is actually separating from the onions. Okay. Okay, I'll leave it for a minute or two and then we're going to add the plum tomato to it. Okay, do you have any other questions for me, Testy? So, as you said, um, mom's favorite, do you do normally cooking at home? Oh my gosh, yeah. I absolutely love cooking. Okay. I, you would always try me, trying recipes. Um, and when my mom used to entertain, we entertained quite a lot at home, given us we have a fairly large family. Mom is always in the center of some sort of um, charity event or the other. So every weekend, and you find that this is a lot with Daniel um, families. She is in her, her women's group at church. So for all the charity events and the fundraisings that they have to do, mom will be in the middle of it and I get roped in to help him with the cooking okay. and everything like that. So that's where I got my passion for cooking passion. from. Okay. Yes. Right, so um, now it looks like it's a huge pot of tomato puree, but because I'm going to do quite a few portions for my team, I'm just adding now the plum tomatoes that is chopped up um, to make quite a substantial amount, say about 10 portions of the um, jollof rice so the team gets to taste, okay? Right. So, as you can see here, the tomato sauce is actually coming together very nicely. Okay. I'll add a few more spoonfuls of the plum tomato so we can have a nice thick sauce of stew and then when we put the rice in it, it's going to be very, very rich. Okay, that's, that's what we're looking for. All right, so here we go. This should take about five to 10 minutes just so that we can cook the acidity out of the plum tomatoes. Um, and then the spices from the chili um, will actually be pronounced. Okay, I'm gonna put this to the side here. Okay. Now, in order to season this, what I normally add at this stage then will be my bay leaf. So again, bay leaves cast through the acidity of the tomato and I like the flavor that it enhances so a couple of leaves of bay leaves goes in there 
um, we've got your stock cube. So we're going, this is a, a veggie stock cube, so it's vegetarian friendly as well. If you are looking to then put that as a vegetarian meal, um, somebody else can then try that. So you just squeeze the veggie stocks in there so it actually melts into the stew. Okay. And we've also got here some salt, a pinch of salt to go through. Um, and I also like to add dry my spoon some garlic powder at this stage so a couple of staples of garlic powder because again it gives you a nice texture to it okay so there we go this is looking good already really yes <laughs> the color is good huh? this is looking this, really the good the nice smell coming off that garlic well, I wish yeah. you guys were here to smell it because it absolutely yes. has already got this whole place smelling amazing, just like you would expect. Okay, so we're going to leave this to simmer for a little bit and then we'll come back to it. Whilst this is simmering, I'm actually going to prep my plantain that I'm going to be cooking. Yeah, there we go. So... Now I like heat in my meals, so I'm going to now prep the plantain that I'm going to serve as a side with the, let's clear up a little bit around here. That we're going to serve as a side with the jollof rice. Now, I've got something here called kelewele shito. Yeah, so this here is your chili, your cinnamon, be your nutmeg, some garlic powder, um, and you put this actually on the plantain. That gives it a totally different kind of texture. Now this normally is half, it's like a street food when you add this um, spice, this kelewili spice to it, right? So you go, by the way, so when you go back home, like this, the street food hawkers, that's sort of they will have this chopped up very nicely, seasoned with a kelewili spice, and then they sell that sometimes by itself or with some nuts, um, dry roasted peanuts stunning snack i'm telling you we used if you're a good child normally back in the day you get a treat and you're allowed you're given a little bit of pocket money and you go to the side street and you get your kelly and your nuts to go with it so i'm going to be doing that for you very soon okay Thank you. now let's get this a stir and see where we are okay. this is looking really good now, the way you can see that the stew is coming along and almost there, um, we'll taste in a minute, is you can see that the oil, the oil is separating from the actual tomato base yes. and everything is cooking together very, very nicely. So that means your stock base is there, almost there. So we need it to cook for a few more minutes before then we'll wash the rice and then add it to it. Okay. Right. Let's put the fire down a little bit. with the jollof rice so literally seasoned it with some nice uh, cajun spice um, and then you actually just put it very lightly in a very hot griddle pan just to get your nice marbling on it as you can see right now and then i'm going to put this in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes we're going to keep it nice and moist and then it will be ready to be served with our jollof rice okay so whilst that is cooking we can prep the fried plantain as well so, as they say in showbiz well, this is one I prepped earlier. So you've got here my sliced plantain and you'll just season that with our Kelewele spice. Very easy. That's the cheap way of doing it. If you did want to do this yourself, so then you will have in your food processor or your hand blender, your Nutri-Bricks, some chili, some cinnamon, a little bit of nutmeg, some salt and pepper, 
and then you just add it to it. Sometimes you put add a touch of vanilla seed or something like that, but it is actually, it's got a totally different smell to it. I wish you were here to smell it, but it looks quite stunning. Right, so I'm gonna get ready on my pan to fry this shallow frying I like to do. Because of the um, spices on it, if you deep fry it, then it actually, the seasoning goes straight into the oil and you're not able to reuse it again. So let's get ready and shallow fry this. Okay. So, I've got here my pan and I'm gonna increase the heat so that we can get it nice and hot whilst my stew is cooking away, okay? So here we go. In here, very light oil, just so that you can cover the base of the pan and then you can fry that. Some people like deep frying it um, just because it's kind of really, and like I said, the spice is gonna go through the oil. I want to shallow fry this because then you don't waste so much oil, okay? Right, we're gonna give it time to warm up a little bit and then we'll get the little bit fried. I'm actually going to need a spatula. Welcome back guys. So now the oil is nice and hot and ready for us to shallow fry our calibrate or plantain slices. Okay, so I'm just going to drop that in there. Because of the spice, I've actually got my disposable gloves on. Um, so here we go. This should take no longer than a few minutes to actually, as you can see, the spices are actually coming out of the oil. Um, so we just need to make sure that we keep our light on this and then it doesn't burn. Alright? Okay. Now I'm just going to put the heat down a little so that this will cook nicely. Okay. Okay. Whilst we're waiting for that to cook, I'm now then going to add, I've actually, as part of serving the jollof rice, you can actually harvest some of this stew, so you can have a nice side kick of nice spicy tomato sauce to it, if you want it with your jollof. So I've actually gone ahead and taken a few spoonfuls, just so that we can serve this with the jollof rice, okay? So we're gonna keep this to the side, and we'll warm it up when we're ready to serve. Okay, so here we are. This is your rice. Um, this is enough for about, um, eight people so my staff are absolutely queuing up at the door of the kitchen so i'm going to make a nice big pot so they all get to try it okay so here we go rice all washed to get as much starch out of this as possible and then you go ahead and just add it to your stew okay so here we go this then you can add some nice hot i do add hot water to it um just to loosen the rice and literally all you want to do is the slowest possible heat and steam it through and then you'll get nice Fluffy rice. I generally tend to use basmati rice because I find that that is quite flavorful and it's got a nice fragrance to it and it's complemented by the bay leaf that you add as well. Okay, so give this a good stir and then you can see it's absolutely covered by the rich tomato sauce. This is going to be so good. Right, okay. So we're now going to leave this steaming for about 10 to 15 minutes and we'll come back and check and see whether it needs a lot more water to it or not. So I'm gonna now loosen it up with a little bit of my hot water um, and then I'll leave it to cook. Because you've got quite a lot, well I have got quite a lot of the stew in it, you not need too much water but you can add water as you go along when it's all nice and steamed up, okay? All right, I'll be right back. We're going to go and pay some bills, as they say. Two, one. Okay, so welcome back. As you can see, our plantain is absolutely golden brown and ready to go. Now it looks um, slightly darker on the skin because of the spice that is on it, but it smells pretty stunning. Even if I do say so myself. It's really tasty. Oh actually. my it's God. Really nice. The guys are going to have a feast today. So here we are. Nice Kilawili slices. The Ghanaian way okay now if you like your food with a bit of heat you have to try this okay here we go so this will be set to the side in a warmer ready to be served with the jollof when it's cooked okay guys so now we're going to wait for the rice to steam 
um, chicken is only a few minutes away and then we'll come back and we'll dish up. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay guys, welcome back. So as you can see, we're getting along very nicely. The jollof is actually taking all the sauce, in, um, it's all evaporated into the rice. So at this stage, you need a little bit more water to make sure that the rice will cook very nicely and become quite fluffy. So hot water, um, a little bit, about 50 ml, and so that we can just loosen it up to make sure that the rice will cook very nicely. Stir it up to make sure all of the bottom doesn't catch, although you want the crunchy bits in the bottom, all right? So we're just gonna stir this up and leave it to cook um, until the rice is done, all right? It's looking good, guys. Not long to go now. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay guys, welcome back. So, chicken is actually ready now. So, I'm gonna take this out and we're gonna keep it nice and warm um, whilst we get ready to plate the jollof rice. This looks amazing. It smells equally great. So, we'll be right back to plate that. Give me a second. Right, so, we're going to actually put um, some nice garden peas just with a little bit of water on it in the microwave for a couple of minutes so we can serve that as a side to complement the jollof. Okay, so here we go. One. Right, so we're ready. Look at that. Now this is what jollof is all about. Look at the steam of it. Look at the color of it. It smells pretty really nice. amazing right guys let's plate up so i'm gonna move this over here and then i'm gonna kind of plate up i'll tell you what this looks like a huge pot just as grandma made it so look at that how stunning does that look so we're ready with our garden peas and i'm going to take that out and get it ready to serve up okay right okay so we've got our lovely cajun chicken over here and your nice plantain over here and then your rice. So I've taken a little bit of addition up your nice uh, sauce, tomato sauce on there in case you wanted a lot more spice and softness to your rice. And then we're going to dish up the peas ready to go. So could use a smaller spoon really, couldn't I? But here we go. Nice green crunchy peas to go with that. And there you have it, nice piece, nothing at all to it. And then a little bit of chefiness going on here. Here we go. Oh, the guys are absolutely queuing out of the door, ready to go with that. So let's get this rice nice and tight on here. Okay, so. So we're just gonna tidy up a little bit, make the presentation look great. You eat with your eyes. So we need to make sure that everything looks stunning. So there you go, perfect. Now we're gonna fan out our plantain, make a nice, hopefully a really good presentation on this. Um, here we are, this is the Kilewale plantain, um, nice slices of plantain with the Kilewale shito on it. It's got a bit of a kick to it, right? And then on here, you've got your nice spicy Cajun chicken. There you go. Look at that now. This looks really good. I can't wait. And let's have a bit of greenery on there to make it look pretty good. Okay, there you go. So, hold on a minute, there, Doreen. Tell me what Black History Month means to you. Okay. Black History Month means authenticity, right? This, to me, is what Black History is all about, being your authentic self. Enjoy. Hi. Hi, Doreen. Tell me what Black History Month means to you. Well, so, black history, to me, is authenticity. Being your authentic self. And this, to me, is authenticity. This is my version. 
of black history. That's what it means to be an Indian. It's look so lovely, nice. And right, guys, come and get it. All right, let's taste it. Okay, I'm taking the honor to taste <laughs> first. <laughs> This looks good, even if I say so myself. Don't be shy testing. Tell me what you think. <laughs> Lovely. I think the chicken is really nice uh, and moist. What do really you think? Nice. Taste is there, flavor is there. It's really, really, really spicy, mm -hmm. but it's really nice. Okay. Nice. Well, there really you have good. it. Very good. The rice is really nice. Ghanaian jollof rice made by my authentic self. Have a good day. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Really All right, let me go. Come and taste. I'm done. <laughs>